Welcome back to part two of Sewing Basics. Today we're going to be actually starting to sew for the first time. Really exciting. So we learned last time about our machine, about the different parts of the machine, and also how to thread both the bobbin and the thread from the top of the machine, which is really important. If you don't have that part down, you're going to run into a lot of trouble later. So today we're going to be practicing we're not going to actually be making anything, just running some fabric through, making some lines, and making sure that we get a good straight line and good tension in our thread and fabric. So let's get started. So I have a piece of scrap fabric here. This is good for practicing. Um, it doesn't matter if you make a mistake, I would recommend definitely practicing with uh, a piece of fabric maybe from the fabric store or if you don't have any of that you can practice with an old t-shirt, old sheets, anything that you have that's a uh, fabric of some sort that you can waste by practicing on. So I have this folded in half. Usually you have fabric that's laying on top of another piece of fabric and then you sew them to bind them together. And then we're going to put in pins to make sure that they stay put as we're sewing. So say that we're going to be sewing an imaginary seam along the edge here. We're going to line it up, make sure it's in place, and then we're going to put a pin in to one side. We're going to bend it towards you and then push the pin through so that it's laying on the top part. And there are many different ways of pinning. Um, a lot of people recommend going in from the side so that if you're sewing down this line here, you can just pull them out as you're sewing. So space them out, put another pin a little bit further down, go in, bend it towards yourself, and then push it through the fabric so that it's laying on top. Okay, so we have this pinned down and we're ready to start sewing across the side of it. So I'm going to place the fabric in the machine right under the presser foot here. I'm going to reach around back and push the presser foot down. And since we have the presser foot already pressing in place, I can take out that first pin and put it back in my pin cushion, which I'm keeping nearby. Prepare to start sewing. First, you're going to want to make sure your foot pedal is in a comfortable position on the floor so that you can easily reach it and uh, step on it with the right amount of pressure like you would a gas pedal in a car. So remember, if you're pressing lightly, it's going to go slow. If you're pressing very hard, it's going to go faster. Make sure your needle's in position in the center that we have it on straight stitch. Pattern is a straight stitch and our stitch width is a just a single row of stitches. Make sure that your dial doesn't have the uh, lock pressed down for the bobbin. And then when you're ready, you're gonna wanna put one hand on one side and you're gonna use that hand just to guide the fabric to make sure it doesn't twist as we're going along. So the first thing you wanna do is to hold down the button for reverse. So Sometimes people start out by going forward and then reverse, um, but I like to go reverse first. Well, as long as you're able to lock the stitches in place, it should be fine. So I usually use like a thumb or something so I can hold on uh, to the machine and then press the button down. You're going to hold that in place and then use your foot to press down on the pedal and it's going to go backwards. So try going slow first. And then once you get a small distance backwards, you're going to sew directly over that spot that you just sewed. And anytime you want to pause, you want to make sure the needle is in the fabric. That means it'll keep it in place. If you get any wrinkles that happen, if the needle's in the fabric down below the machine, you can lift up the presser foot, readjust, and then put the presser foot back down and begin sewing again. So we're going to try to follow a straight line. Uh, this piece of fabric is a little ragged, but um, you'll generally use the lines on the side as a guide and kind of make sure that it stays going in a straight line. So let's keep going. And 
then if you want to use your hand crank, you can bring that forward um, to make sure that it's in the fabric. I want to remove this pin before we continue. And then I'll sew again. you get your bobbin thread stuck underneath the presser foot here, you can just stop and move that out of the way and keep going. And when you get to the end, we're going to need to lock the stitch in place so that it doesn't move around or lift up. So the way you do that is again with the reverse button. So once you've reached the end of where you want to stitch, you want to go backwards over that seam stitch. And then back forward again. And then when you're done, when you've reached the end of your stitch line, you're going to want to make sure the needle is all the way upright so that this part of the machine is all the way up to the top and that your needle is all the way in its highest position. Lift up the presser foot in the back, and then pull the fabric away from the machine. So you're going to have a lot of excess thread sticking out here. Just cut that off. If you have um, a little notch on the side of your machine to cut it, you can cut it there. I think I have one in the back here, so I will use that. And you just pull it down through the notch, and it will cut it off for yourself, or you can use scissors. So. If you look here, it didn't quite line up in the back, but my line is very straight, so the fabric was cut a little funny. Um, but again, this is practice. You want to see if the stitches might be too tight, which it looks like they might be, so I will try to loosen up the tension here. Put that on two instead of three. And then I would definitely suggest just going again and then stitching another row continue to practice and over time if your if your stitches are a little wobbly you're going all over the place um, you can try to draw a line a guide if that helps you um, and just know that practice will make it a whole lot better so that's pretty much it um, this is just getting to know your sewing machine it's half the battle every sewing machine is going to be a little bit different they're going to have their own quirks definitely don't be afraid of making mistakes yeah, it's just part of the learning process. I believe in you. Um, if you need any help, there's plenty of resources on our digital collection that you might be able to reach out to through uh, Hoopla or Overdrive that have books about sewing and things that can help you along um, to learn more if you want to get more into this hobby. So happy sewing and good luck. Please remember to like, follow, and subscribe to us on social media. We're SSJCPL, the Stockton St. Joaquin County Public Library. And don't forget to visit our website at SSJCPL.org. We have so many cool things. We have a database called Hobbies and Crafts Reference Center where you can research a lot of different uh, projects like sewing, crocheting, any types of uh, do-it-yourself kind of crafts. You can look to see what we offer as far as information on how to do those things online. Just check it out under research and databases. You'll find the Hobbies and Crafts Reference Center online. So check it out and we'll get back to you soon with lots of other cool content.